Um, who is behind all your destruction? Thank you. Okay. There's four D's to destruction. And I wanted, I, and I, I go over all this so many times, it's literally a broken record. But this is so important because who do we fight against every day of the week? And what's Wednesday night supposed to be? It's like a, it's like a fueling station, right? And with that being said, we want to thank each and every one for not only being here at One Accord Church this uh, Wednesday night. For those of you viewing us, viewing us live, we thank you for being or tuning in to One Accord Church. Uh, if you're looking for a church that believes doing it in one accord with God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, and you believe in doing God's way, we'd love for you to come join us. Amen. We don't have to have four books to tell you what we believe. We just need one. And that's what we stand on. Well, the reason why I thought about these four D's to destruction is because I've done so many services and studies on them so many times through the years. And, and you know, I've never gotten in trouble unless I stepped out of God's will. But when you step out of God's will and Satan uses four tactics to get you in his will. And, um, and with that being said... You know, I want you to understand these four D's to destruction because if you focus on these four D's and what the Bible says, you will understand because the devil starts with a what? A D. Okay, so the four D's to destruction is, is, is what Satan, the devil, is what they use to, to destroy our minds. And a, a, a scripture that I, I love truly and these are scriptures that I've learned and memorized through the years. Why? So I can tell everybody I memorize them? No. Because I understand the only way I can get out of the destruction is to understand or know what the Word of God says. You've got to know it. And you've got to want to uh, absorb it. And you've got to want to memorize it. Anybody memorizing any scriptures? Right, you do it without even acknowledging it, really. You, people tell me, said, I, I can't, I just have a terrible time remembering or memorizing Scripture. I said, that's a lie. <laughs> you calling me a liar? Well, I, I prove you wrong. How many of us have to pull out the owner's manual to your vehicle to get in to drive it? Okay, how many of you know that, and not only that, your job, Right? You've memorized it, right? Anybody think about it? You memorize stuff every day. You don't even think about what you do. And that's my whole point. Who's in charge of your brain? God. Okay, so if God made you, okay, God made you. God don't make no mistakes or no messes. He created that mind for that specific reason. And the reason why we talked about these deeds of destruction is because it's basically uh, an attack that begins in your mind. First Peter 5 8. We know this scripture all too well. Right? Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now, notice what he said in the last five words. Seeking whom he may devour. Seeking. What does that mean? He's looking. And um, he can't devour you. He's looking for something. What is he seeking? A prey. Okay, a lion is seeking someone to devour, right? Okay, and what is Satan looking for? He is actually looking for those that are, are walking in the flesh rather than the spirit. And that's what he's looking for. You know, Satan didn't just jump out and attack me in my life, I had to be doing something that he was seeking to find. Satan can't touch you, he can only seek you, but he's seeking to see if you're doing the things that he can get you with. Okay? That makes any sense. Well, the first thing we need to understand, the first D is, is and this is so important, and, and, and I probably, for the first 30-some years of my life, I, I messed this one up. The, the, one of the first D's is our desires. The first D to your stru destruction that Satan used is your desires. And if we don't open our eyes and see that, the Bible tells us over and over again the desires. 
Now, what's the desire? You know, have you ever seen something you know you shouldn't want, but you want it anyway? Right? It's just like chocolate cake. Right? You look at that thing. How many of you have been so full you couldn't eat? And you looked and saw that chocolate cake and said, man, I sure would love to have a piece of that cake. I'm so full. <laughs> I can't even got no room for it, but I, I just desire it. And what will you probably do if you desire it? You're going to eat it. Right? And then you're going to grumble the rest of the night. Oh, right? Well, Satan used them same the desires to draw us away um, from Christ. In fact, James 1.14 put it like this. Keep Kathy on the ball tonight. But every man is tempted. Hey, listen, was Je now leave that up there. Was Jesus tempted? Yes. Okay. All right. So listen, but every man is tempted. So guess what? Everybody's going to be tempted, right? That's what he just said. But look what he says. When he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Everyone's tempted to be drawn away by his own desires and lust and enticed. We're tempted to, right? But what happens is if we give in to it, what happens is it leads to destruction, right? All right, of, of his own. And notice why he says his own lust. Why does he say that? Because we can't blame nobody but ourselves. His own lust and, his, and enticed because we have control. That's the reason why he says we are in control of what we choose to do and how we're drawn away, right? I think that a lot of times we forget this, um, that we keep blaming Satan. And I hope I've taught people enough through the years. Satan, you, we give him way too much credit. Satan only can seek you. He can't devour you. Unless you've been drawn out and doing something you shouldn't be doing. All right? Now, with that said, we're talking about this. Satan attacks through um, our desires, whether they're legitimate or, or whether they're illegitimate. It doesn't matter. He, he uses every aspect to draw us away to these desires. Satan attempts to drive us, what, to extreme or to do the right things in the wrong way as well. Uh, desires can destroy someone. The fleshly desires, we must exercise self-discipline. You know, we've picked on this, right? Everybody knows what I use when I say self-discipline. Anybody remember? I know Miss Joan does. What do I pick, pick on you on about self-discipline? Oh, come on. The light's on, but nobody's home. Huh? Donuts. I'm telling y'all, I've just gone slam to sleep on me tonight. You know why? If you drive by there and the light on, you don't even think twice about it. They have that light on so that you can do what? I know, Kay don't eat donuts. But I do. And, but the thing about it, though, it is, is, if that light is on... We, have, we are drawn into that light. Look, why do you think they have sales? I mean, come on. Look, I'm just going to look right here. Don't need nothing. Do what? That's right. And, and, and they put that thing in there. Buy one, get three free. She didn't need one, but she comes back. I got three free. And then it says also, they give you these coupons. What do they do? And I love, this is so funny. When they ring it up wherever you go, you saved $395 today. And I only spent 150 But guess what? You still got drawn in to the desire and you didn't even need it. I'm just saying. But, but we must exercise self-discipline. And, and, and how do we do that? Let's, let's be real a second. How do you, how do you have self-discipline? Let me tell you something. It ain't something that you just can pick up and do. 
Satan is not just going to back off just because you got saved. He's going to still come after you. You've got to learn that you've got to have a serious prayer life. Man, you've got to pray because Satan, he's out there. He's, he's not letting go. And, and you better be praying. And you better put some faith to work. You better have faith in what you're praying for. You better have faith that the Lord's going to be there for you with what you're going through. And I'm talking about desires. Anybody ever get attacked in their mind sometimes, things that, that are way back in your past? And all of a sudden it just pops up like it, somebody just brought it right to you. What do I do? I'm going to tell you what I do. I, 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 I go to the Word of God because, see, I know that desire to attack my mind is coming from who? Say, so I know he's knocking at the door. So what he does when he knocks at my door, the first thing I do, I, I, I go right to the scripture. I don't have to go to the word. The word's in you if, you've, if you want to win these battles. And, I, and I, put, I, I even tell him, I said, you know, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. I said, Lord, and I want to bring that thought to, to, to obedience to you right now. You deal with that, not me. Now, see, why do I do this? It's because, see, the desire comes to your mind in the thought. Okay, right? If you don't have a thought, you don't do it. People, some people say, well, I was, I was not thinking. That's impossible. Yeah. You can't do it without thinking it. But Satan, has, he's very cunning, and he's very decisive, and he will slide in if we're not careful and we don't put our faith. Where, and also, um, when we think about Jesus and, and, and what he did, um, patience. And um, whenever you, you, these desires come up, you've got to be patient, and you've got to pray and, and talk to the Lord. But also, because Satan wants to defeat you with these satanic attacks, and, and, and we must understand this, um, that we have an obligation to, to go to the Lord every time something comes up that, that tries to pull us away so that Satan can use these desires, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and pride of life. We have to ha have the power of God in us to overcome it. Now, James 1.12 said this. I mean, was it 1.12? Yes, James 1.12 said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. What's endureth? Means that he, goes, he makes it through it. Blessed is the man that endures temptation for when he is tried. Tried. That means it's whenever Satan is coming after him, he shall receive the crown of life. Because, see, listen, some people say, well, my, I, I, I'm weak. I just don't have the strength I need to overcome the temptation. That's Satan lying to you. See, let me tell you something. If we know that there's a reward for overcoming, and there is a reward, and that's a crown of life. Which the Lord hath promised to them that, that love him. See, let me tell you something. People say, well, I have to give in to temptations, all right? But if someone says, look, I'll give you $500 if you don't watch this program tonight that's got this, this sexual mess in it. How many of you would turn off television and say, give me $500? Right? Because there's a reward for not doing it. You with me? If someone come up to you and say, hey, I tell you what, um, do you cuss? Say, we, unfortunately. So I'll tell you what, I'll give you $5,000 if you'll let me record you for 24 hours and you don't say a single cuss word. How many of us would take up that bet? We would because we wanted the what? The reward. Okay, so listen. Why am I saying this to you? Because God is telling us right there in his word. He said, listen closely. There is rewards for those that overcome the temptation. So instead of me thinking about this thought that I got and thinking about my past, my past is dead. I'm thinking about a reward to overcome it. So if I finally overcome it, I get a reward. You say, well, well, Jesus said when he comes back, he will have our rewards, but God rewards us now. When we come over something right now, I'm like, okay, here's a, see, whenever Satan comes at me and I mean, he's nailing me, then I have to stop and think, now there's a reward waiting me if I make the right decision. The first thing is Satan don't get me. Okay, but there's a greater reward than Satan. Satan's not my problem. My blessing is the reward that my father's going to give me. 
He might even, who knows, he might even get somebody to make a car payment for me. Or he might even send somebody to me to, to pay a bill. Or better yet, he might keep my car running. Or, or better yet, on and on, he might keep my health good. Or he might give me a good doctor's report. See, there's rewards. See, for those that use these situations to draw you out, there's rewards whenever you say, uh, hot dog. See, that's going to mess Satan up. Satan you, tries to throw these desires at you to get what? To destroy you. But you need to say, oh, hot dog, this is an opportunity to get blessed. We can look at it two different ways. We can look at it negative or we can look at it positive. Now, with that being said, the Lord has promised to them that love him, and that's us. So the Lord has promised to them that love them is you. So that means, does anybody know that God loves you? Okay, so he just said he's promised it to you. God can't lie. So listen, next time you have a thought that doesn't line up, not only rebuke it in the name of Jesus, I even, I do a lot of stuff. I say, I claim the blood of Jesus over that thought. And I, I, I verbally say, Satan, that's a lie. And, I, and I'm not listening to you. You know, and then, but then in the back of my mind, the Lord says, I've, I know the Lord's promised me. I said, okay, let me, good, this is getting better. Okay, I'm not going to let them same, same temptations get me down because, see, I'm going to build me some crowns. Okay, I'm, I'm going to move out of my, my, little, my little talking and my little blessings. I'm going to start moving up the ladder. Listen, let me tell you something. The four days to destruction, Satan's used them to keep you from reaching your potential. But not only that, but also reaching God, what God wants to do for you. Satan wants to block you. In fact, every time I do something, whether it's preaching or, or, or services or teaching, wherever I go, I, when I look at my wife, I say, well, I, I used to say, well, I'm having a tough day. But I know why. It's because I, I, I give Satan a hard time. I preached against him. And, and, and Jonah tell you, sometimes he just comes at me full blast. But I have to remember what his purpose is. He wants to rob me of my glory he wants to rob me of my blessing let me tell you something you ever done something for somebody someone says no i can't let you do it and someone say look you you trying to rob me of my blessing yeah. Yeah. anybody ever said it my wife's the world's worst for that <laughs> somebody do something she says you can't i said look don't rob them of their blessing and mine <laughs> why do people do those things with people because they love the Lord and they want to do something nice for you. Don't rob them of their blessing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Amen. Don't rob, look, don't rob me of my blessing because God's using them to bless me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just telling you, that's, that's the facts. Well, the number two D of destruction is a defect. <laughs> now, what's defects? Well, Paul can tell you what a defect is, okay? In 2 Corinthians 12, 7, let's show them what a defect is. And least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, least I should be exalted above measure. Leave that up there because, see, a lot of people always come to me, well, preacher, you know the Bible, and they always come up this question. Exactly what was that thorn in his flesh? I said, he told us. His name is Satan. The thorn in, in no, it won't the thorn in his spirit. Somebody work with me here. Wake up and work with me. <laughs> the thorn was given to him in his what? Do you know why it was given to his flesh? Amen, because, but he can't attack you spiritually. Yeah. 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 See, so Satan can only mess with the flesh. Yeah. He said, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. What's buffet? Yeah. Yeah. Aggravate you, mess you up, drive you crazy. Least I should be exalted above measure. Now, now, we don't break stuff down, but at least I should be exalted above measure. What was that to stop him from being exalted? Exalted by who? God. He wanted to bring him down. See, listen, so look, a lot of people don't get this. Satan will attack your flesh. 
And if you're getting old as I am, we all understand that. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Satan harassed Apostle Paul through his thorn in his flesh. Satan attacks you and I also through our afflictions and our infirmities and our sicknesses. But Paul asserted something. He said, um, in, in, go to 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Look what Paul's saying two verses later. He said, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now, with that scripture right there, somebody look at this real carefully. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. The Lord was telling him that his strength is made perfect in Paul's weakness. So this defect, Paul didn't look at it as a defect. He looked at it as an opportunity for the power of God to override his problem. He, Paul said, I'd rather glory in my infirmities. Why? Because he knew God greater as he is in him than he was in his flesh. Paul knew that no matter what he did to the flesh, what was in him was greater. So he was like, okay, I got an infirmity. I've asked God to get rid of it. He said, no, you just good with it. So he said, okay, well, good. I got this infirmity, but the good news of it is I'm going to glory in it because then the power of Christ will show up through my infirmity. Y'all yeah. yeah. going to wake up and praise the Lord some sooner or later. That's because we got to understand we all have defects. Amen. The defects shouldn't be spiritual. They should be in your flesh. Right? Amen. Okay, well, good. Let's go to strike three. The four D's to destruction number three is your defeats. Anybody been defeated? Felt defeated? Amen. But let me tell you what he said in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. And no marvel... For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So that means that Satan loves to, 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 to do things to bring defeat. But he's also, he transformed into an angel of light. What is, it, what is transformed? Anybody seen Transformers? Anybody seen that commercial on TV where these robots are going up to Walmart and they turn into a Volkswagen and they load up the groceries and all these transformers, and when they come up with these transformers transformed from cars to robots, well, see, Satan transforms from the most evilest, evilest demonic force into something of what? An angel of light. Think about that. An angel of light. Now, with that being said about your defeats, you got to understand something. We, we underestimate the power of the enemy sometimes. We do. Everyone becomes discouraged. Anybody been discouraged this week? No? Anybody felt defeated at times? It's after we have kind of floundered around like a, You ever seen a flounder? A flounder does what? Why did he get his name Flounder. Okay, he flounders. If you ever go on flounder gigging and you miss him, and, he, and you can find him because you see where he floundered through. And he lays, but see, <laughs> just sharing it with you. After we, what do we do when we get caught up in our defeats? We flounder around in it, right? We're like a bunch of flounders floundering around. And Satan takes advantage of that circumstance when we're, Floundering around in our defeats, right? So I'm just, that's just a flounder analogy. Now, <laughs> now during times of defeat, we must take positive action and put our faith to work. When we're going through these times, church, we must reach out to, to, um, to the Lord. We must pray. Whenever we're going through these areas, we must not allow Satan to keep us in it. Because God will let you stay in your defeat as long as you want to stay there. Now, how can we get out of our defeated personality and, um, and not allow Satan to use this de defeat or these defeats to bring us down? First of all, 
I guarantee you there's somebody out there going through something worse than you are. Okay. What you need to do is get your eyes off your own problems. Sometimes, look, let me tell you something. Pray for somebody else even if you don't feel like praying. You know, do something for someone else because then you get your eyes off your problems. And you get your eyes on what Christ did. What did Christ do? Christ was beat, crucified, nailed to the cross. Most worst agony and pain any human being has ever suffered and ever will. But what did he do to get his mind off of his problems? He looked up and took on somebody else's. And what we need to do is we need to do the same thing and take his example. If we do these things, we will be encouraged and Satan will be defeated. Because Satan is only as strong as we are weak. We got to realize that we give Satan too much power. What do you mean? Well, whenever we're defeated in a circumstance and whenever we're going through what we're going through, listen, Satan only grows strong if we allow that defeat to keep us down. You fall down, get up. Don't wait and say, well, how long has it got to be before I get up? Get up. Immediately, as soon as you realize you've done it. Some people used to say, well, how can you do that and just get right up? Because I'm not going to let Satan, he knocked me down, but I'm going to get right back up. I, I always tell Joan, and I'm glad she's in here, but I'm not picking on her. I always say, look, when, whenever somebody messes up, anybody here ever messed up? Amen. How about anybody messed up with your spouse or something and you said, I'm sorry? Right? Okay. How long do you hold on to not forgiving them? Ooh. I'm not ready to forgive you yet. Well, good. Satan's going to hold on to that thing. I'm right, ain't I, y'all? No, I'm right. Well, I just, I, are, are you still mad at me? Well, I'm not really ready to talk about it right now. Yeah, but I said I was sorry. It, it don't matter. But yet, see, what you got to understand something. It's not the person, it's who's going to control the circumstances if we don't say, okay, I receive it. Because once you receive it, you're forgiven. When you ask the Lord to forgive your sins, what does he say? Well, Travis, I appreciate you coming up to me and telling me you're sorry, but buddy, not now. I don't think so. He says, repent and you shall be forgiven, washed away, thrown away. You follow me? So what we got to do is we got to realize that as soon as we go through something and look, and I've even known what I was going to do was wrong, but I still did it anyway. Anybody ever been like that? The Holy Spirit, you know you shouldn't be doing this. You know you shouldn't be doing it. Then I'm like, I turn him off like a radio and do it. And as soon as I do it, I'm like, I know you told me I shouldn't do it. Then Satan says, well, you're not, you can't be forgiven. You're going to have to wander around for three days and, and, and waller in the mud for three days before, before you can ask forgiveness. That's a lie. We need to understand whenever we fall, get up. Yeah. Whenever you mess up, admit you messed up, which I do right often. But mine's little stuff. See, you know I'm human. But the thing about it is what you got to understand here, church, is Satan can only keep you defeated as long as you keep him in you. You got to learn to do that. Um, but, the God, but Peter said in 1 five, Peter, Peter 5.10, he said this, But the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that ye have suffered a while make you perfect establish strengthen and settle you in other words the Lord will after you've suffered through what you've gone through sometimes you feel like where are you at Lord let me tell you something the Lord was there when you went down and the Lord says that after you have suffered he said he will make you perfect we don't like to hear make that perfect. That means that after you've suffered, why have you suffered? Because you got defeated because you went out there and done something you shouldn't have done. But the Lord says, okay, I'm going to still make you perfect. What's perfect? He's going to bring you back where you needed to be before you messed up. He didn't say, I'm going to make you half perfect. He says, whenever you come to me, whenever you get up off of what brought you to defeat, he said, I'm going to make you perfect. 
Somebody just grab that one. Yeah. yeah. Everybody totes around their past. Everybody totes around the problem and say, well, I, I'll never be able to be who I used to be because I messed up. Well, you don't know the Bible. God says, hey, after you suffered a while or whatever you've done, you mess up. He said, he'll make you perfect. He'll establish you. And he will strengthen you and he will settle you. So I, this goes to somebody listening. Everybody keeps telling you you've messed up and there's no hope. Tell them to go jump in the lake. You tell them that your God said that once you come to him, after you've suffered a while, he's going to make you perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So guess what? That's for everyone. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Last but not least, the last D. Deceit. <sighs> now why is deceit so important? Because that's Satan. Now, I want to go in the book of Revelations because that's the best place in the world to show you about deceit. In Revelations 20, listen to what he's saying. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Listen closely. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now, why am I bringing this? Satan shall go out to deceive the nations. You got to watch Satan. He's a deceiver. Even though he's locked up, the first thing he's going to do after that thousand years is gonna read, the, read the Bible. What's he going to come back? What's the first thing he's going to do? Deceive. Satan is a deceiver. And look, that's one of these things that he walks around with a roaring lion, as a roaring lion, seeking out who he can destroy because he wants to deceive people. He's deceiving the church. And let me tell you how he's deceiving the church, and I'll save this for another service, but he's deceiving the church when he tells them that you can get to heaven without doing it this way. Yeah. He's deceiving the church, saying that we can live a sinful life but still make it to heaven. He's deceiving the people when he tells them, oh, just... Do the best you can. Don't worry about doing it God's way. God loves you no matter who you are. That's a deceive. Satan is using everything to deceive us because that's why he said very clearly that when it comes to a time, that path's going to be straight and narrow. Satan is a deceiver. And if we don't know him, how are we going to know he's deceiving us? How are our young people going to learn what deception is if we don't show them through God's word? Sure, that, you know, people don't get this. We live in a theology now that here's the way it is. God's going to love you no matter what. Well, that's true. Yeah. Now, God's going to love you straight to hell. God don't want you to go there, but he's going to love you. But here's what we don't understand. But God expects us to do it his way. Amen. And, and that's how we are deceiving ourselves. Um, Satan is constantly trying to deceive and defeat you and I. Why? Because he is the accuser of the brethren. The Bible says he's an accuser of their brethren. I think it's uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 3. What's the deceiver of the brethren? Are, you, are, we, are we the brethren? I'm just checking this. So this must be for us. But I fear, at least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now notice what he said. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. What is he trying to do? Deceive you in believing the simplest simplicity of the word of God. Listen, people have told me I believe that I'm going to heaven but I don't agree with this. That's a deception from Satan. You got to believe this. Because the word is the truth. The word is exactly what we need. Our defense is in God. The destruction only comes when we operate out of the will of God. Through his love and grace, we are more than conquerors. I'm going to show this last scripture to you. Romans 8, Kathy, um, 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Who, who are we? So we are more than what? Through who? Okay, so all of you are more than conquerors. 
You're just not an average old conqueror. You're more than conquerors. Everybody believe that. Because that's the only way you're going to defeat the, 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 the Satan. Is you got to understand who you are. And you got to believe it. Alright look at Romans 8.38. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life. Nor angels. Nor principalities. Nor powers. Nor things present. Nor things to come. I wish I had put 39 up there. But I didn't. I wanted that one up there. Did I put 39? Can you throw me 39 up there? You can't. She will. But. Notice what he said. He said that no matter what, he's persuaded. Paul is persuaded what? That no matter what, n death can't bother him. Listen, that nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul finishes up by saying we're talking about deceit. Listen, Satan can't deceive you unless you allow him to deceive you. But the reason why we live in such a deceived world is because I'm just going to tell you straight. Nobody wants to believe this. And if we start realizing that God, God's got something great planned for us, but we've got to follow his directions. When we follow Satan's, these four D's will lead to destruction. But we've got to learn to follow God's plan. You've got to operate not in the four D's that lead to destruction, but you need to operate in the fruit of the Spirit. The four D's is your flesh. Okay, so if the four D's is your flesh, and the flesh is what's destroying you, correct? Didn't we just read earlier where he said about the flesh? Paul had a thorn in his but see, he made it, there was a reason it was in his flesh because you got to have power in the spirit. What are the fruit of spirits? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. So what, so what you got to understand something, you want to destroy Satan? Operate in the spirit. Your flesh is going to be tempted. But it can't win if you're strong in the spirit. And when we're strong in the spirit, then like Paul, his spiritual part was so strong. Paul said, okay, bring on the thorn. That thorn, you, that thorn is going to make me blessed. Because, see, I'm not going to let that thorn hurt me. I'm going to use it against you. Because, see, Satan can only get by with what we give him. Right? So when we talk about this destruction, we need to realize that the destruction is our decision. Nobody ever made me do nothing I didn't want to do. Yeah. Okay. I did everything wrong. I did it. Yeah. Okay. Y'all didn't make me do it. She didn't make me do it. I did it. So I have to choose, like Paul, not to operate under my problem, but realize there's a solution that's greater. And realize that I have a decision to make. Listen, when you decide you want to do something, you'll do it. When you make up your mind that you had it. Let me tell you something. I always told people from day one in us, and when we'd done our programs, wherever I did it, talking to people, no matter what it was going through, I looked right straight at them, didn't know them from Adam. I said, let me tell you something. I said, you might as well not, I might as well waste your time. They want drugs in the drug rehab centers. I said, I said, let's don't even waste each other's time. They were like, wow, I thought you were here to encourage us. I said, I am. I said, because you know why y'all don't quit and you know why you always keep coming back? Because you love it. I said, you'll never quit it till you hate it. Because yeah. Yeah. the Bible says, hate the sin, not the sinner. Amen. So Amen. what you got to learn to do, you know why I quit stuff? Because I got, I got, I said, Lord, make me hate it. Yeah. Yeah. You got to hate it. Yeah. You got to hate, you got to hate all them things that belongs to Satan. Yeah. See, when you start hating the stuff that belongs to Satan, you start loving the things that belong to God. Yeah. And when you do that, you will find out that um, destruction is not for us. It doesn't belong to us. Yeah. We are children of God don't allow Satan 
to do anything to you. But if he does, what do you do? Get up. Get up right yeah. then. Yeah. Don't walk around as I pick on Miss Joan. I pick on her because, you know, when we get mad, we want the people to know that we're mad at them, right? Why don't you, why don't you talk to me? I ain't talking to you no more. <laughs> don't, don't even bother me. Go outside. Do something. Don't even. I, I, that, then you go outside for three or four hours, right? Some of you all day. And you come back. Are you still mad? I'm serious. I'm just being honest. And no, I'm not ready. No, I'm not ready yet. Okay. My whole point of it is, we've got to understand that that's Satan. So let's be quick to forgive. Let's be quick to get up so that Satan won't destroy us. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, for your word that gives us strength and courage and guidance and direction. We thank you, Lord, that your word is power. And, Lord, I pray for everyone in this room right now. I pray for our minds. Lord, I pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word that we will grow closer to you more and more every day and grow further away from Satan in all his attacks. We know he has to come in through the, the gates of our mind. Lord, I pray that we will shut that door. I pray, Lord, that we will not only shut that door, but we will put the master lock on that door that Satan can't penetrate our minds. Lord, help us to grow stronger so, Lord, that we can be used to reach out to reach our children and all those in this world that are lost in need of Jesus. Lord, as we go tonight, as we close, we want to be the church you want us to be. Equip us, Lord. Equip your saints that we may tote around the whole armor of God so that we will be the church, Lord, that you will look at one day and say, well done, thy good and faithful servants. One Accord Church wants to be that church. Use us, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all so much.